somebody said, you know, some stuff that happened in the Bible, somebody said it really happened. It's still secondhand until you encounter God yourself. That's the clincher, if you ask me. That's the clincher. Once you encounter God for yourself, once you encounter God for yourself, that's the clincher. And it's not hard to encounter God. It's really not. I know God. I know how to approach him. You got to come to him with a humble heart. But see, God's so real. You can come at God like this. God. You know, people say you real. People say that Jesus is your son and that he's God and that he's our savior. God, if you are who you say you are, if Jesus is who they say he is, Lord, I ask you to reveal yourself to me. I ask you in all humility and all respect God, I ask you to show yourself to me, God. I ask you to give me a revelation of your son, Jesus, if he if he's real. And I'm, and, and, and I'm not talking about being sarcastic with God. I'm not talking about coming at God like he owe you something. Like he's the one who needs salvation and not you. I ain't talking about coming to God funny like that. I'm talking about coming to God sincerely, God. I hear a lot of stories about you, but I don't know you. God, if you really real, God, I ask you to give me a personal revelation of who you are so that I might know you. I'm telling you, if you come to God like that, he'll show you in your own way. Because he'll reveal himself to you in your own way. The prophets in the Bible, he revealed himself to them different ways. He said he revealed himself to Samuel by the word, by the word of the Lord. Said there was no open vision in his day. God revealed himself to me by the word. I heard God speak before I got baptized with the Holy Ghost. He spoke a word to me about my calling. What he called me to be. He spoke a word whispering in my ear as I woke up. He began to reveal himself to me by his word speaking scriptures in my ear as I was waking up. Then I got baptized in the Holy Ghost. Which was that change. A change that was not of me. A change that was of him. But it was a change that I wanted. It was a change I had already tried to make but didn't have the power to sustain. Then he came with his power, his super, on top of my natural and changed me. And the change was sustained as you pursue a relationship with God. See, the baptism of the Holy Ghost is an event, but it's meant to be a lifestyle. It starts out as an event, but it becomes a way of life. The baptism of the Holy Ghost and praying in tongues or speaking in tongues, it's not just meant to be an event. It's meant to be a way of life. It's meant to be a way of life. Get filled with the Holy Ghost and stay full of the Holy Ghost. That's what God wants. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then later on, you know, as time go on, that's when you really see if it's real. You know, because time will tell. But later on, I slid back. back. 
And even though you have the spirit, that don't mean you walking in the spirit. You post the the flesh is supposed to be subject to the spirit, but you can flip this thing and have the spirit subject to the flesh. Which is not the way it's supposed to be, but sometimes that's the way we do it. God forbid, God forgive us, God forbid, and God forgive us. But there's no forgiveness if you continue in the flesh. You got to repent, turn from your sin. Walk the way that God called you to walk in newness of life. Walk in the spirit. Because that's where our life is. Our life is in the spirit. It ain't in the natural. This corruptible, this corruption must put on incorruption. This mortal must put on immortality. Yeah. But I think my main point is always two sides of the story. And if you if if you if you don't if you don't if, if you haven't received a revelation from God about God, then God's side of the story will seem like foolishness unto you. If your spiritual eyes haven't been opened by the word of God, that's what faith is. The evident, the substance of things hoped for, watch this, the evidence of things unseen. That's what the, when you believe the word of God, that's faith. When the word of God is being spoke over you or when you partaking in the word of God, it could be through the Bible or the word is being spoken unto you and your eyes become open. That's faith. Because once your spiritual eyes become open, you believe the word. No, 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 hold on, hold on. I don't want to say that. I don't mean that. I don't mean that. I mean to say that like this. The word opens up your eyes. God uses the word to open up your eyes. And once your eyes are open, then you can receive the word of God with faith. Then you can believe the word of God by faith. But see, when, when, when you're trying to find God when you're trying to prove or disprove God through intellect, you can't find God without God. His spirit has to draw you. His spirit has to open up your eyes. Or he'll be hid from you. See, I started off with two sides to the story, but where I'm at right now is finding God, discovering God. Because, see, I'm dealing with, I'm meeting people, and I'm finding out about people who don't believe in God or they don't, they don't have a solid revelation of God. It's my word against theirs, and, and people have cast doubt in their mind in, through intellectualism. See, that's what they do in colleges, even some Christian colleges. And sometimes it might not be that they don't believe in God, but they don't have a proper revelation of God. They think that, that the power of God has ceased. 
and the gifts of the Spirit have ceased and miracles have ceased. And they don't believe in a God that's actually working and active in our daily lives. And see, that's what society is. It's all about re-education. If you believe in God, then they want to re-educate you. Watch this. How they re-educate you? Through man's knowledge, through intellectualism. Through man's knowledge, man's wisdom, everything that he's casting down in the Bible. Because man's wisdom is opposite the knowledge of God, and the knowledge of God is opposite man's wisdom. Man's wisdom is foolishness unto God, and the knowledge of God is foolishness to the natural man who doesn't have his spiritual eyes open. I'm trying to get to where I'm going, and I'll know when I'm there, and that's when I'll be done. But I'm digging right now. I'm pressing through right now. See, especially in the secular colleges, universities, even in school, even in science, they teach you the Big Bang Theory. They don't teach you about God creating this. They taking shots at your faith from the time you enter the public school. But if you've never met God, if you've never encountered God, then you ain't got nothing to stand on because it's they word versus the Bible. And really the Bible is just like any other book if you don't really know Jesus. Because once you really know Jesus, that's when the Bible becomes alive. That's why he talk about the Jews in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. He, he say when they read the law... And they read the law and the prophets. When they read the Old Testament, it's a veil over them. He said they can't see it clear because they don't have Christ. All they see is rules and regulations and sacrifices and do this and don't do that. And it never made any of them righteous. And when Jesus did come, fulfilling the Old Testament prophecies, they didn't recognize him when he came. But they weren't really looking for him. Because there was people who was really looking for him. The old man Simeon, Anna the prophetess. See, they was really looking for him. And they had spiritual revelation. Of when he came. Said he was led up of the spirit into the temple. When Mary had him with her. See it's all by the spirit. If you ain't really trying to serve God. You won't have that fellowship with his spirit. If you ain't really trying to know God. The spirit ain't going to reveal him to you. Because if God, because watch this, if you ask him for a revelation of who God is, the spirit know what you're going to do with that revelation if you get it. If the spirit knows that if you ask him for a revelation of God and you get a revelation of Jesus Christ, you have no intentions of living for him, why should he give you a revelation of him? That's why the Pharisees never got a revelation of Jesus. Because they wasn't trying to live for him. And even when, uh, who was it that went to hell? Um, the rich man and Lazarus. The rich man and Lazarus. When the rich man went to hell, he said, I'm going to go back 
and, and I'm going to tell them to repent so they won't come to this place. But he said, you now you don't need to go back from the dead. You are, they already got the, the Moses.